While Nintendo is known for their long line of successful games, consoles, handhelds, and accessories, there were bound to be a few stinkers. One of them was the Virtual Boy. Though I personally think that isn't the case. Though I can understand how some people could not feel well when playing this, I don't have any issues when I play it, and I find it to have some good games. I love me some galactic pinball every time I turn it on. I genuinely believe this to be a good 32-bit system, which isn't saying much as there isn't many good ones that come to mind besides the PS1. But it had a cool look, neat games, and yes, a kick-ass controller. This is the Virtual Boy controller, the one and only controller for the Virtual Boy. While most would think VR games now having those type of controllers for each hand, back then you had the basics of a controller you can find on your preferred console of choice. Though this was far from basic, in fact it's amplified for the 3D games it controls. Zooming in on the left hand side we have a d-pad that goes inward the farther you go in the center. A design I quite like with gray select and start buttons next to it. Over on the right are the red A and B buttons as well as another d-pad of the same shape and feel. I believe it's the only controller to have two d-pads and this was before having two C sticks would prove to be a better fit. But don't get me wrong, these D-pads are very comfortable and work well with how they interact with games, kinda like both sides are a mirror image almost. Nintendo's Virtual Boy had a unique presentation, and you could argue ahead of its time, even in some good ways. Along the top portion you have your on and off switch. Yes, the controller was how you turn the system on and off and it was maybe the first to do so. How you may ask? Well by bypassing the controller cord we have the back side where we not only have good grips, not to mention some excellent shoulder buttons, but we have this square area that can be used for the battery compartment. The Virtual Boy can take six AA batteries lasting up to about five hours, or you can use this compartment that takes an AC adapter for unlimited time to play. I am usually one for the AC compartment to preserve batteries from a cruel fate, and luckily plugs are very fruitful this day and age. Could this be considered Nintendo's first hybrid? It's possible since it can be plugged in for home use, or taken outside for 5 hours worth of enjoyment. But what games could you play with the Virtual Boy controller? Well, 32-bit VR games, of course. Let's have a look at some. Of the 22 or more that you can play on the Virtual Boy, you're gonna have to play them all with the Virtual Boy controller. You got good ones like Jack Bros and Wario Land, plus the not-so-good like Red Alarm and Waterworld. But one thing's for sure, no matter what you'll play, you'll definitely see a lot of red. I know you can't see what I'm playing, but the best footage I can get isn't usually the best. But I've reviewed a number of games already if you want to see what they're like. But as our focus was on the Virtual Boy controller, I didn't want to take focus off the impressiveness that it is. It really is a cool controller in look and implementation of features that wouldn't become popular until much later. You'll absolutely need to have one if you ever get a Virtual Boy, as it's basically mandatory as no other controllers were released, as the system wasn't out long enough to warrant any. Wish it lasted for Nintendo to release the external connector for two-player action, then I can put this second controller to good use. Don't ask why I have a second controller, stuff just happens in this 3D world. Got any fond memories with this controller slash accessory? Tell me about it by leaving a comment. If you like what you see, be sure to leave a like. If you think others would like this, share the video around. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button pronto. This is Brian the Blue, and I'll see you later.